Supplementary. Tinakwe, Mr. Speaker, Imehinui Kia Kato Kato. I rise to take a call on the Student Loan Scheme Bill, and the Green Party will be voting to send this bill to Select Committee for further investigation. As with all tax legislation, the devil is in the detail, and we look forward to the submissions. And while we're supporting it on first reading, our continuing support is not guaranteed. Our national debt, Mr Speaker, is over 11 billion, and this loan scheme itself is a major disaster and a giant experiment gone wrong. This particular technical tax bill, while introducing some common sense and some uncontroversial ideas, as well as some that are more controversial, fails to tackle the elephant in the room, the scheme itself. This bill fails to address the debt problem and still continues to value and measure the loan burden as a national asset. While we fiddle, Rome for the indebted generation is still burning. And perhaps we should stop at this point, Mr Speaker, and congratulate Sir Roger Douglas and the men of his time who introduced this bill. Because we have created a generation who are economically disempowered by this model and who no longer believe that their government and their country and their elders think that education is something that is worth investing in. It is all up to them as individuals. They are on their own. And the consequences of that ideology that we are all on our own can be seen right across the board in our communities today. And it is not a pretty sight. The student loan scheme was introduced in 1992 under another national government, and it's a giant mistake. The current total debt is 11,236,962,000 and growing by the second. Total debt is growing by a billion a year. And surely this isn't sustainable at the national macroeconomic macro level, especially not for the individual student and families affected. Gareth Hughes MP is one of the more than 560,000 New Zealanders who has a student loan. I'm lucky I don't have one. I'm too old. I got a free education. And so I feel very reluctant to punish those who didn't in this manner. However, my daughter has a debt. And so does many other people parent, who are parents here. And Gareth's debt is on a similar scale to the 2008 average individual debt, which was 28,000. Coming back to the bill itself. The Student Loan Scheme Bill sets out changes to the way the student loans are handled by the IRD, replacing the current Student Loan Scheme Act 1992. This bill seeks to make the system electronic-based and under the realm of one provider, IRD. It tightens up penalties for non-payment, which some of us are very dubious about, and replaces the annual assessment for the vast majority of borrowers whose income is largely from salary or wages only with a pay period assessment. Now, there's some complex and counterproductive implications which has been touched on by some of the Labour speakers um, just now with this proposal, and we hope that the Select Committee will need to address this and will take this seriously. But let's start with the good things in the Bill. The Bill doesn't fundamentally alter the interest-free loan status introduced in 2006 by the last Labour Government. This was probably the biggest change of the scheme since its introduction, and yet it still didn't alter the unfair experiment that is crippling this generation and future generations with debt. No matter how much lipsticks you put on it, it's still a pig in a sow crate. The bill aims to make the student loan scheme simpler, and this will benefit students as well as graduates. It cuts down on the administration of loans. And at the moment, there are two bodies which share the information, IID and StudyLink, and they and we, who are trying to find out about the level of debt in our families, have to keep going back and forth between these bodies. So this is a step forward actually focusing it in IRD. Earlier, Gareth talked about, in his previous speeches on this, um, about not knowing how much he owes, which is a bizarre situation when we're all supposed to be so economically savvy, is that we can't know how much we know. And so that's because he couldn't go online and check it out. So it is a big step forward if he can do that. It's amazing that it has taken till 2010 to see an electronic version and an ability to access the amount of a loan. This in particular makes it easier for overseas borrowers to access information. There are hundreds, if not thousands, of student loan refugees overseas, each with their own tale of how the student loan bill got out of control. And I'd like to quote from the New Zealand Herald on September the 4th, 2010, about somebody known as Trev. Trev is not his real name. But what we, what we are going to call him, because he wouldn't be too happy to be outed and get a knock on the door 
in Queensland from a debt collector, thanks to a small loan he took out as a 19-year-old, largely to buy a stereo. That loan has spun out of control and looks set to plague that this New Zealander now living in Queensland for the rest of his life. Five years ago, the original 7,000 had raised to 157,000 and was accelerating so fast that Trev feels the total is likely to be approaching 250,000 now. I'm going to talk about an unintended consequence. Trev can't face looking at it anymore, and he, as he hasn't the hope of affording the huge monthly repayments, he has decided to put his head in the sand. That is the legacy of a system based on interest for overseas borrowers. And it means that many New Zealanders are now permanently alienated from their home country. And if you think that's a good thing, you might like to reflect on the consequences for future generations of this kind of debt-based punitive system. The bill sees the student loan as a government asset, not a government burden. And it introduces an, an admin fee. The Minister knows he can't mess about with the popular interest-free loans policy, so he's trying to get around it by charging interest by stealth. The Minister has floated the idea of an annual $50 charge to all former students with an outstanding loan balance. This would affect 500,000 New Zealanders and net the government about $15 million per year. It seems unnecessarily punitive to hit all these people with an extra annual fee that they cannot avoid. However, why are we surprised? This whole system was always about a punitive view of getting an education. And believe it or not, Mr Speaker, there are countries in the world that invest in their young people, that value education and do not see it as something which they should punish young people and create a permanent debt from them. However, we are not in the modern world when it comes to this. We are still in punitive mode. However, we do think that this bill will make the administration of the loan cheaper. So that's where the savings should come. Better administration, more electronic process, not more fees and burdens on students. Because otherwise it's just a continuation of this government's cold-blooded approach to the student debt issue and failing to recognise that student loans are, as an, are an investment in education and the future of our economy. One area we seek to investigate in detail is the process for people earning under the 19,000 compulsory repayment exemption. The process appears difficult and puts the onus on the student or graduate to A, know about it, B, approach their boss about it, and C, obtain a certificate for exemption. And I think there are many younger people who have thrown up their hands at the bureaucracy and complexity of the existing situation who are not going to embrace or understand any more changes. And it, there is the possibility that it may be easier for graduates to get caught out with repayments. One very worrying clause allows for, quote, further means of recovering amounts that remain unpaid. And we are guessing that that means, between the lines, debt collection. As the Herald editorial pointed out, we need a fair approach to student loans, and calling in your debt collected burly mates will just see more is spent on debt collection than is collected. We don't use debt collectors for those who skip overseas and skimp on child support, now do we? The pro portfolio is currently projected to grow to $14.5 billion by 2014, driven by growth in the number of new borrowers. Thus, we are saddling an entire generation with crippling debt that could impact on all areas of their lives and is only going to get worse unless we act now. We need real solutions to student debt and the sector in general. As Gareth has made the Minister aware of, we are seeing a cut in the tertiary education spend, which is seeing institutions shut their doors to prospective students. The Minister has also introduced a lifetime limit for access to student loans. This Minister is limiting those who want to do a double degree, changing midway through their studies, study a long course like medicine, or who, who take a while, like the Minister himself, to get their zoology degree. It means the system is very inflexible and very rigid, and we need to give it a D. So in summary, we will be voting to investigate and possibly amend in the select committee um, this bill on the basis of the issues that I have raised, and our, our support is not guaranteed. And I have to say I agree with Grant Robertson that the quote of dampening demand, a comment made by the Tertiary Minister, is an appalling comment from that Minister, who should at least understand if he wants to talk the language of the market obsessively, like so many people do in this House, as if there was no other reality, that education is an investment. The Green Party is very concerned, and at every opportunity with every student loan bill, we will lay this concern on the table, while also supporting the positive things that are in the tidy-up legislation as far as it goes. So we are watching this space. Thank you.